Welcome back to another episode of the Slightly More Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Chris Michael. I'm Shane Patrick Cruz. Welcome to another episode. Welcome to another week. I hope you all are doing fantastic in this quarantine time still. We're, super, we're probably one of the most... We're, Virginia is probably one of the worst. Well, I don't know worst, but... It's pretty strict. It's pretty strict. Like we're on lockdown until June 10th right June now. June 10th. So Man. technically businesses can open up. May 14th, I don't think that's going to happen. I think yeah. they're still going to be closed for another week after that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, again, not as bad, though, as what happened to you yesterday. <laughs> My housemate and I were feeling stressed out. I was like, we were talking about some things. And I was like, you know what, man? You know what help us? Let's just go for a ride. Let's just go for a drive. Windows down. Go into the city. We turn the corner and the dude wraps the car around a pole. On my side, which I'm a little frustrated about. <laughs> all trying to get out of the way of an ambulance. Yeah, so, so he, so he. first of all, I don't know why he didn't full stop at the red light. He kind of like rolled through it. The ambulance is coming. And it was fine. He could just, you know, slowly move to the right. But somehow he starts like speeding up and moving to the left. And I, all I said, these are my words. I said, just pull to the right. And then I regret saying that. Because he <laughs> jerked the wheel and floored it. Next thing you know, I saw a pole coming at me. I tried to, I remember what I heard about just ragdolling. Oh, oh, sorry, I had the mic. That's the sound of the pole. And then uh, I had to, the door, went, next thing I know, I'm in this car, the door went open, I had to like kick it open and get out. And then the first thing I said to him, I'm like, you could have just pulled over. Yeah. So glad you're here, glad you're okay. Yeah, my neck um, is killing me. I'm tired because I've been putting in the work on social media. I called one of my good friends who's like kind of coaching in social media. I was like, man. I don't sleep anymore. I don't eat. Rough, I'm like, man. I'm having, I'm having trouble like focusing on things. I can't do my taxes. Like I don't want to answer emails. I just yeah. am so overwhelmed. And then he's like, yeah, man, you know what that's called? I said, burnout. He goes, no, nah, man, it means you're grinding. Go harder. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, sort of a good leeway in there. What we're going to talk about today, which is, uh, should you be on social media? Uh, what platform should you be on? Um, the short answer, yes. Not a sponsor, um, but delicious. No sugar. Yeah, I just had a monster earlier. I like the white ones with no sugar. I don't know um, if I had those. Oh, the white ones are so this, this good. It's weird. Man. Like zero sugar things you can usually tell. I, I have no clue about that. It just tastes. Yeah, the white ones taste amazing. <laughs> um, sponsorship. My girlfriend's dad has Corona. Whoa, really? Sorry. <laughs> you like how I slid that in there? Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> no affiliation with Monster Energy. Yeah, I just kind of—that's a horrible segue. You can tell what my mind was on when we started filming this. Dang, I had no idea. Um, but Shane uh, just told me that the topic you wanted to talk about, which is which social media platform should you be on? And my initial instinct to that was saying all of them. And then Shane said, "Well, we're going to talk about that." So yeah, one of the the arguments that Shane wants to make—it's not even an argument; it's just a fact—is there's different groups of people that you'll reach on different platforms like LinkedIn. If, and this, we're going to speak specifically about performers, but this applies to all business. Yeah. If you're a B2B type of business, um, you know, business to business, being on LinkedIn is really where you're going to get your competitive edge. Yeah. Um, just remember that there's a lot of people working for that same attention span. You know what right. I mean? Like there's a lot of, you're, you're going to be working with people who are more within your niche. Facebook is where you're going to reach more families, moms, you know, things like that. Uh, fa Facebook's a little bit more wide reaching, but not really going to have a large e young audience. No, right? not at all. Yeah. Um, Instagram is good. I'm a little confused about who's on Instagram because I get a mix of everything. I get kids, I get corporate people. Yeah. Instagram does have a mix of everything. Um, you know, it's not so much the younger teenage generation anymore, really. Yeah. They're, they're on there, but they're not in the news feed so much. Right. They're more in the stories and the lives yeah. on Instagram as opposed to in the actual posting things on news feeds. Um, every, every platform ages out, right? So, like, the only thing that's really stayed consistent is LinkedIn as a, as a social media platform. Well, even overall. now they're, they're on the up and up. They've been on the up and up for the last year, really. Well, that's because LinkedIn gets the most organic reach without having to pay for reach, right? So, without having to pay for ads, Instagram right. actually gets the most. And so, what's happened is people have gotten, businesses have gotten kind of ticked off that they have to pay to reach people so much on Instagram and Facebook now that they're starting to post more, uh, they're starting to post less business-like content on, Inst yeah. on on LinkedIn. And so more and more generalized content is going over to LinkedIn, whereas you didn't see that two years ago, right? And now the big platform is TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. TikTok is huge. And don't right write now. it off. I, I talk to people no. all the time where I mention TikTok and they're like, ah, well, I'll get there eventually. Or it's we'll not see. just young kids. 
It's not. No, it's definitely not. It, it's everybody. A good friend of ours, Eric Jones, I told him about TikTok. He will not budge on it. And it, he's got different reasons. It's because the whole Chinese thing, Chinese owning, owning it. But Look, I, yeah. at, a, at a point, hey, I'm willing to sell my info to the Chinese to get in front of paying clients. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you might think like, well, I don't really even perform for kids or I don't sell products to kids, so I'm not going to be on TikTok. But one of the things I was just telling Shane a little while ago was if you find out that somebody's a star on a hit TV show, it doesn't matter if you watch that TV show or not. You place value in that person, right? You you see that they, they know something that's behind the veil that most people don't have access to. And being famous on TikTok supplies that same thing. You know, if you think about a Disney Channel star, like when you run into them in the mall, aren't you still going home and telling your friends, you know what I ran into at the mall? That Disney Channel star. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you watch Disney Channel. There's a value placed on that person based yeah. on their experience. And so TikTok right now has the most organic reach out of any platform. I think- And it's almost instantaneous. I think I think it's ever existed. Like I put a video on there within days, I got 30,000 views. Yeah. No, nothing I've done before that had 30,000 views. Now, consistently I'm getting that, but right on Instagram, but that's a whole different topic. Yeah. So um, each platform, the easiest way to describe this is each platform is basically a, a conversation, right? Right. And each platform has a different style of conversation, has a different style of speaking to the to the other person, right? Which is the, the user of that platform, right? Instagram is 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 still mostly business related. Uh, if you're in any kind of business whatsoever, you should absolutely be or not um, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. Um, you should be on LinkedIn. And uh, if you are a corporate magician, specifically speaking to the magicians out there, you absolutely need to be putting out content on LinkedIn. Uh, it's more business related. Um, post articles that have to do with anything in the workplace. And honestly, um, uh, we forgot about YouTube. I mean, I think oh, yeah, YouTube, YouTube you should, st I mean, it's such a, it's such a massive thing that we didn't even mention. Yeah. It goes without saying, no matter what field you're in, you should be putting content on YouTube because yeah. when people are looking for information, they're more than likely going to go to Google or YouTube. And, and YouTube is owned by Google. Yeah, right. And Google's often going to promote their YouTube video. Yeah. So like, you know, YouTube's got a really great organic reach. Um, if you can hit that, if you can it hit the jackpot. It takes jackpot, longer. It takes longer, yeah. There is there is a way to leverage it, which is eventually what I want to get into in regards to Instagram and TikTok. There's, there's a way that, you know, like I said earlier, the short answer really is every, you need to be doing all of them, right? Now, granted, that is a lot of work. That yeah. is a that is a job within a, in uh, within itself, right? Each one is a job. Each within itself. one specifically is a job within itself, right? Um, but yet, you should still try to put out something on each platform. Yeah. There is a short way that you can create one big piece of content and then break that one piece of content up and put it on all the different platforms uh, in different in talk, you know, in different ways visually, yeah. in different ways with what you say in the captions. Right? You're still using that one same piece of content, but you're uh, repurposing it in different languages, if you will, for the different platforms. That's a good way to put it kind of speaking in a different way on those different platforms. It can be the same piece of content, but you're maybe selling it differently. I remember when when Facebook started really pushing their video platform, yeah. you'd see a lot of people who would take their same exact YouTube video, just put more emojis on it and then post it on Facebook. You yeah. know, they're speaking that language. Yeah. One thing too that I want to mention is you don't want to be that entity or that person who isn't omnipresent. You know, you might be on YouTube, some people are going to look at your YouTube channel and they say, do you have a TikTok? And you say, no, it's like uh, credibility goes down. Yeah. You know, Coca-Cola is a massive business because they're omnipresent. You can see them everywhere. Every store yeah. has them. They have every social media. They're in every football game, basketball game. Like, they're everywhere. Yeah. Um, and if you're not like that, you're not thinking big enough. And, you know, maybe you're going to do one TikTok video a week, one Instagram video a week, one Facebook. But at least you're putting out consistent content. Um, I would start there. It's better if you can do it every day. Yeah. So here's the thing, though. It's like, why... <sighs> I, I used to be in the category that thought that the content was the only thing that mattered, right? Like it doesn't matter follower count. Um, it doesn't matter how many people watched your video. Uh, Cause a lot of you will start putting out videos and you're like, I only got 30 views out of this video. Well, like, hold on. In the beginning though, that it, that did help just having the content alone. Because when I could send clients my YouTube and there were videos posted, just, right. Brrr, tons of videos my credibility shot up it didn't matter how many views i had that's right well that's what i was going to say was you know it's it's still it's important to put out the content but you know what i was going to say is the people that follow you and and therefore look at that content i used to think was less 
than actually putting out the content. Now I actually think they're one and the same, right? It, it, they, they both leverage each other, right? So the more content you put out provides more credibility for you. So, you know, Chris, we put out a lot of content for Chris and we lot. have for six months How many? Now. I mean, we, we shot six for- months. For the beginning, we shot for 60 pieces of content a day. Yeah, so and we, we were putting out pretty Yeah, we that. did. We were, Sometimes we put out 100 pieces of content a day. We put out a lot. <laughs> so, um, and it was, and it, I immediately noticed the difference in my business. Immediately. Yeah, yeah because here's here's the thing, right, is clients, you're like, well, why should, why should I put out that, right? If I'm not getting the followers or if I'm not getting the view count, that actually in the beginning doesn't matter. No. And, and at a 50,000-foot view, right, if you're, if you're, not thinking real granular, right? If you're thinking big picture, then that is key because clients, potential clients go and look at that and they go, oh gosh, this guy. Here's, here's the credibility factor and uh, summed up in one sentence. When a client calls Chris and they say, what is, like, what is it that you do? Instead of Chris having to go through this whole long conversation of, oh, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, he literally says, hey, just search Chris Mike Magic on, on Google. Or, or, You'll see everything. Yeah. That, that is a power statement right there to be able to know for a fact that when they go to Google, they see all the YouTube videos pop up, they see the Facebook stuff pop up, they see Instagram. the YouTube and the Instagram. and The and reviews, the photos, the reviews, all and of it. the people who write about my content. So then there's like, you know, there's like the libraries who posted my stuff. Yeah. And like the, I have a few like news articles I never even know, knew were written about me that pop up and yeah. a lot of it's just spit off some of my content. And so that's important yeah. too. The other thing is, um, another great credibility thing is we made content based on what people were commonly, like, I feel like sometimes as an entrepreneur, you kind of have to say yes to a lot of things and yeah. you may actually be an expert in them, but they don't believe you. Mm -hmm. So like people are all the time asking me to do fundraiser events and I always have to say, oh, well, here's some ideas I have on fundraisers. Like, here's what we're gonna do. Yeah. And then I just think I'm kind of come up with it on the spot. But when I could say, oh, fundraisers, I do this all the time. In fact, I did them so much. I made a YouTube video specifically about the things to think about when owning a fun when running a fundraiser. Now, pfft, Credibility, credibility shot because, through the roof. Because it's like, oh, not only does he think about it, he's an expert in this so much that he made a video because he talks about it so much. Right. So here's the interesting uh, place that we're at right now with Chris's content, which is using one platform to leverage all the other platforms, right? So what we're doing now and what Chris has gotten huge success with in the last week and a half is Instagram. So you've shot up over 7,000 followers now in a week yeah, and a half. I was doing, you just hit 10,000 followers on Instagram. Yes, yeah, so I was doing 1,000 followers a day, really for seven days. I did it for, it was 10 days exactly, but the first three days I couldn't get my Instagram live to work, which was like a pivotal thing and trying to make this happen. Right. Once I got my Instagram live to work and I was starting to get promo posts for people, boom, seven <laughs> days, a thousand followers a day. My DMs are through the roof and um, it was massive success. And one I don't know really where you were going with that, but I want to. Well, no, but so here's the issue with that is like, why create content on the different platforms? Now you create it to get to a certain level where now you can leverage that content and that platform against the other platforms. Uh, here's the specific outline of how the leverage works. Instagram in particular. Chris just hit 10,000. When you hit 10,000 on Instagram, when you hit 10,000 followers, you get the uh, you get the swipe up feature within your stories. So to push you, them out to... So to push them out to literally any other piece of web-based content you want. So YouTube, right? Uh, your website, Facebook, a landing page of some sort or another, right? So that's huge now that you're able to take the followers that you now have on let's say Instagram now and push them out to the other platforms. Now that is a huge step. It's so gonna it's help me like, grow my TikTok too, if you think about it. When I put right. videos on TikTok, um, right. and I can have stuff up to watch it. Yeah. Too. So now it's we take the Instagram followers and because you haven't really done anything with TikTok, you're just really getting started with that. You put 20 or so videos on there, but now we're like, okay, how do we take the Instagram followers and push them over to TikTok. We're also thinking about what is something that we can put on YouTube now because YouTube, you've gained not a whole lot because it's, here's the thing, we're lazy and we don't want to go out of the- of He the, means we as, in a, as, a, as, a, as a society. As a society yeah. yeah, we don't want to go out of the platform that we're currently in. If we're in Instagram, we don't want to go to, if someone's like, 
hey, uh, link in bio, you know, go to my YouTube, watch my new YouTube show, link in bio. I, I never am going to take the time to go click back to their bio, scroll all the way back up, go to the link, and then it opens up in a new browser. Like I have to do that all on my own manually. But if I'm in a story and all I have to do is this, and it takes me right there. So now we're thinking, okay, how do we take the success on Instagram and then leverage, leverage it against TikTok and leverage it against YouTube? Here's the difference though. It's not the same content on each platform, right? So Instagram is a very specific type of, type of content that's a, that's a mixture of lives and produced content right. that looks live. That's, that's the kind of caveat to that, to where TikTok is more of an organic thing and like a meme. Spur the moment. And spur of the Which moment just, and let me say this. Do not hear that you have to put out all this content and then be, try to perfect every piece of content. No. I, the other day, didn't have a video out. I was losing followers for not putting out a video every day. I j got in my driveway. I pulled up in my car. I got out of my car, walked up to the camera, changed the color of a poker chip, and walked off the screen and posted that. Massive engagement. Yeah. It's more about just being consistent because people want to build a relationship with you. They want to see your face. The credibility within the platform of starting to gain followers is, you know, I've been seeing this guy's videos every day. I might as well toss him a follow. Yeah, think about if you're in a relationship and you're together for a year and you see each other every single day and then all of a sudden you don't see them for three weeks. The relationship probably going to fail. Yeah. <laughs> or it's, it's at least going to go down, right? Same thing online, unfortunately. The, 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 the good thing is you're gaining a following. The bad thing is if you step away from that platform for any period of time, your following will start to drop. And then you got to regain it again. The pressure. Right? The pressure. It's a lot of pressure. I've been feeling it. Yeah. So now we're at a place now where we're figuring out what is the type of thing that we can put on YouTube to now leverage YouTube and get YouTube to go, you know, to go up to the roof. Because there's a lot now that, that you can do business wise. When you get to a certain point follower wise, you can leverage that not only against the audience that you have to raise up the platforms that you have, but you can, even more than that, you can leverage it, leverage it to gain more business, you right? Know, what's weird to me is that I tried so hard, this is a kind of a brain dump on this podcast, but I tried so hard, and, we, and Shane did too, I mean, Shane's really the mastermind of it, to produce high quality content like that we thought was really, really good. And of course, as soon as I stopped caring about my content, not even caring about it, but stopped trying so hard, isn't that, we got that big boost. Like, yeah. it's so weird how when you become more authentic and comfortable in what you're doing, it goes up. Yeah. But in the beginning, there's nothing wrong with trying a few things. Like me, what me and Shane have to film now is so different than what we started, we started with, with yeah. because we found that what is, what is getting the growth, the engagement, you know? And I get magicians all the time who DM me and they're like, Oh yeah, man, it's great that you boosted 10,000 followers, but like, are those people going to hire you for shows? Not necessarily. It's totally possible. I mean, I've been offered already, but what really is the benefit is that you booked a show today though. That's true. I did, but, because but, I, of the but, I, but I didn't book a show off Instagram that came from my followers. It came from somebody looking at a magician, comparing me to him, me saying, Hey, why don't you take a look at my Instagram? I was a much bigger entity than they were yeah. and they saw more value in it. So they hired yeah. me. Um, yeah, the question we had too, I think it's uh, an interesting thing to bring up is something we talked about two days ago, which was we were talking about, well, what if the client, what if a corporate client goes and looks at your live content, right, that you're posting on your newsfeed? That, that, that's not the point, though. It's like, well, of course, that's not going to be the same type of show they're going to get in a conference, right, or a fundraising event. But that's not the point. Yeah. The point is they look at that and go, gosh, this guy's obviously crushing it because he has 3,500 people that watch yeah, this video. He's got 10,000 followers now. And plus being able to now tell the client, yeah, I actually gained that in two weeks, like week. organically on my own. Like I didn't pay for it. Like, you know, it, it all came on its own. So a business client looks at that and goes, man, that's like this guy's doing something right yeah so it's now it's a uh, credibility once again it goes back to speak towards the credibility towards in fact you. tonight i'm doing a live video on my instagram i know this video won't be out by then so i'm sorry that you missed it but uh tonight i'm getting on an instagram live with somebody who was a past corporate client of mine actually well an attendee for a corporate show I was oh, at. That's good, yeah. and she saw my instagram saw the growth i was getting was like so blown away by it she doesn't care if it's kids she doesn't care yeah the fact that i was able to do something to amount that amount of loyal fans in such a short period of time she went this guy's doing something i'm gonna get him on my live and there's some knowledge in there yeah because that the knowledge the knowledge speaks across industries right yeah. like the core concept of how to build a following is the same across all industries it's just what it looks like and 
visually and sounds like it's different yeah. for each individual. And the being experience. in the room where it happens, this is the huge thing, is I never got DMs back from certain people. As soon as I hit 10K followers, I'm getting DMs back now because yeah. they they now they're like, oh, he's one of us. Oh, he's got the work ethic. Oh, he's not just a gold digger. Like he has value that he's given his audience as well. And I hate to say it, but like when people DM me for stuff, I look at how many followers they have. They have 100, 200 followers. I go, okay, I don't think this person can provide as much value for me as the people who have 30,000, 40,000. You know what I mean? When they yeah. DM me, I'm more likely to respond to that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, here's the thing. What if you only, I think some people might hear that statement and go, well, dang, I only have like two or 300 followers. Like you need to be persistent, right? If you were to DM, if someone were two or 300 followers or DM you one time, It'd be, you'd be like, all right, whatever. But if they were to DM yeah, you like yeah. 10 times, or like, yo, let me create a meme. Let me send you this meme, right? Right. Like, or let me send you this uh, video I'll put together, or let me send you this piece of artwork that I made for you. Use it and just, if they provided value, um, that's key. Actually, right? there's somebody, that will make who, a difference. somebody who follows me, has 300 followers, no clue who they are, don't know how they got in touch with me, whatever, but they follow me and they're a big support every night. And I, listen, I haven't replied, but <laughs> <laughs> I will now after this. They send me this thing and they go, Hey, Chris, just checking in about your day. How do you feel? What did you learn? What do you regret? They do it every night to me. And finally, I was going to do it last night, but I was in a car accident. But I was planning on replying. But they do it every night, and they're so persistent about it. And they said, hey, Chris, saw your story. Like, I really enjoyed that you went to this place. What did you learn from being there? What See, that's someone that's truly trying to engage. Yeah. So even and, if you right. you like, so let's talk this out. So even if you were to, well, obviously, you can't reply to that person every single day. You're just too busy, and you have hundreds of people that DM you now. So... But taking two minutes to reply to that person to go, hey, man, I really appreciate you reaching out. Here's an answer to one of those questions. Thanks so much. That literally, even if they continue to reply to you for the next yeah. three months straight every single day, I guarantee you, even if you never reply to them again for the next 90 days, that one time replying to them makes a lot of And it's not that I don't want to reply. It's not that I think I'm too big. It's just that I literally, I, I set down my phone and by the time I pick it back up, there's 20 new, 40 new, 50 new DMs in my inbox. Just yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. I, I, it just gets lost. And I just, I have to, now I have all these other people who are sending me stuff. I have to reply to them and I just forget. So that's why the persistency is cool because I get to see their name pop up, you know? Yeah. Um, and this like other, just providing value is important too. People who've offered to make me memes or video yeah. ideas. Um, I always, you know, try to build relationships with them. The other thing I'll say too about the whole um, gaining a following, even if it's not your real clients, is like when when people are reaching out to you and they're, let's say it's a marketing thing or a fundraiser, now I've got the added benefit of being able to say, hey, not only that uh, will I attend your event, but I'll also give you guys a shout out on my Instagram mm. and I'll find a way to engage my $10,000 fans uh, or $10,000, my 10,000 fans in a way that benefits your fundraiser. Yeah. So that, that's going to be a really cool value pitch. Um, today, yeah. actually, I told the person, hey, I'm going to give a shout out to your son on my Instagram so 10,000 people can join me in congratulating him on his graduation. Yeah. And she was totally about that. Other thing, I haven't even told Shane this, but this is part of my master plan. With social media, it doesn't matter whether I get big on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. What's really cool is if I can collect these celebrities that I perform for, um, like which is happening to me. I'm getting to perform for more and more celebrities. Well, then people who go on my Instagram might see one of their favorite celebrities. They might see April Jones. They might see Kai and, and, see, and be like, oh my gosh, I love his stuff. He got to work with him. He's way cooler than this other magician. Um, you know, like if I found out yeah. that, if I found out that one of my, like growing up, me and my family were huge Adam Sandler fans. If I found out that like the person I was going to hire to play music at my birthday party like I'm comparing people and I see the one dude who like performed for Adam Sandler. I'm like, oh man, mom, like the guy, you know, we love Adam Sandler. Like, let's do work with him. Yeah. I'd be a little bit more inclined to at least have a conversation with him, not necessarily hire him. Yeah. But. I think that's part of um, anybody that knows Julius Dean out there. I think that's part of yeah. why Julius Dean got so big is when he performed for Post Malone. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think that alone, people are like, oh, wow, this dude's performing for Post Malone. I mean, just the videos alone of like people freaking out and that was okay, but like, when the that was a credibility thing, like even if you, I don't want to give it away, but yeah, um, yeah, I know. If he, yeah, but um, yeah, uh, the fact that he performed has a video of Post Malone or Post Malone freaking out. Same thing with Drake. He performed with Drake um, at a nightclub or something. So yeah. you know that provides credibility. Right? Don't be intimidated so, too. It's it, you, it's just sending DMs. I've learned that. Like yeah. I've now probably performed for twenty celebrities in the past week, like big name people, and it was just asking and just trying. Like I just was persistent. I tried to give value. Now it's easier, but also for a celebrity with 2 million followers, 
ten thousand doesn't really look good to them. I gotta right. continue to grow. So yeah. I know we talked a lot about Instagram, but TikTok, you know, that exact thing applies. When you have 30,000 people on TikTok, get a little bit more credibility. And guess what? TikTok is the fastest way to grow. You can build that 30,000 in honestly a couple of days if you're lucky. Right. Also, uh, TikTok, let's we talk technology here. TikTok has the best AI learning out of any social media platform. What does that mean? That means that when you make your video, it is more likely to go viral than if you were to put that same video on any other platform because yeah. TikTok, here's the here's the downside of the Instagrams and the YouTubes and Can Facebook. I take a guess on this before you take this? I actually don't know the answer. I wanna okay. guess that. I noticed that TikTok shows me things that I am really into. Exactly. Oh, that's what it is? Yeah. So here's the thing. So here's the thing with Instagram, um, YouTube, Facebook, is they only show your stuff to the people that follow you. And they only show those, you know, they only show it to about five to 10% on Instagram of your followers. And on Facebook, it's like 0.2, it's literally nothing on Facebook. Um, the difference on TikTok for now is they not only show it to all the people that follow you, but they show it to other people who follow them and other people who like the content that you just put out. So that's why you can get 40,000 views on a video in three days. That's why you can yeah. get 800,000 followers in four months on TikTok. And I scroll through so many videos on TikTok. When I get on Instagram, I look at three or four pictures in my feed, I look at some stories, and then I have to go on to my next thing. Right? Yeah. I do, I'm done using the bathroom more than likely. Yeah. So, but with TikTok, yeah. I'll stay in the bathroom a little longer. You yeah. know? But, but that's yeah. the thing too, is like, it's 15 second videos, they're colorful, they're engaging, there's music. There's really a lot to like look at on there. I can get through 30 or 40 videos in a sitting on TikTok, whereas with Instagram, I might get to get through two or three. So, yeah. you know, there's people are consuming more content, which means yours has a better chance of being viewed. Also, don't you know, don't try to overthink it. You know? I'm doing that. I'm yeah, doing that. 100%. I mean, just it doesn't just put out content, right? Now here's here's the uh the flat out truth about that is it is a lot of work. Yeah. It is a constant grind <laughs> if you want to get to a certain level, right? So that's up to you, you know, how fast or how slow you want to get there. Uh, it's really seriously up to you. Um, but don't ever think the content, especially in TikTok. Um, I, and I'm at a place too where I'm I'm starting to value my content over my actual work that I receive from the content. It's mm. weird because before I used to put my content off to do the work, right? Like let's say, let's just say you do, you're a painting, you paint houses, right? Let's just use that as an example. And you might be like, well, I don't really wanna make the content because I'm too busy painting at houses. Why do I make content if I'm already working? That's a good argument. But I think you, you need to find time to do both because you're, when you're, you're only gonna be able to paint the houses of the clients you already have and the people you're in front of. When you start making social media content and that credibility goes up, well, now you'll get bigger projects. You know, you'll be seen for more people. I really think that the content is king and really should not be put on the back burner just because you're already doing work. So many magicians I talk to say, I'm not gonna get on TikTok because I'm already booking shows. My calendar's already packed. All right, suit yourself, but you could, there's room to grow. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's, yeah. it's a hard place to be because even in my head, I haven't fully figured that out. I'm stressed about the same thing, which is like, why am I not booking shows, virtual shows in this case, because we're in quarantine, and instead I'm focusing on social media, I know the payoff from the types of shows I get from social media will be so exponential to the shows I could be doing now. It just doesn't even make sense for me to do those. You could also leverage that. So say, you know, let's go back to what you just said, where somebody's like, well, I'm already booking shows. Like, what do I need to do? It's somebody that says, any business, because I've, I've owned a, a marketing and video production business for a while now, and I literally have heard this from so many business owners that say, well, we, we're already selling, like what do we need to market for? Like, you need to market because you can sell more and at a higher cost, right? So it, the, the marketing then becomes easier, yeah. or the selling then becomes easier. It's like now you're at a point now where you, when you start to book the Virtual shows. It's a show, or, don't tell type of thing. That's what it is. It's show, don't tell. Right. Type. So it's then you can even charge more for the shows now because would you, if you were to be like Drake, if you were to hit up Drake and be like, hey man, I got a birthday coming up. Can you come out and, and do a 30 minute show for my birthday? Do you think Drake's going to come out there for $1,000 or $10,000 or even $25,000? No. <laughs> no. No. He's going to come out there for probably six figures, right? That is all because of the credibility 
in the level that he is now at in the perceived um, the, per the perceived level of where he is, right? Which is exactly what you're creating through the online platform now. Is, you know, it's, it's, it's like- And they almost expect it. The client almost expect it. Because yeah. if you tell the client, hey, look, go look at all my stuff. If you are, if, if you, you know, if you and another magician are going for the same gig and you're $10,000 and they're $1,000, the client might go, oh, crap, like, why would I pay this? Well, this guy's 10 grand, this guy's $1,000. That one line again of, hey, look, why don't you just, look, I know it's a lot. Why don't you just go look, just search my name on Google. Um, there's, you know, just look at what you got. That up. one thing alone, they look at that and even if they don't book you in the end, they still Shane, know. I'm gonna ask you to read these text messages out loud. These are real text messages from a client from the show I booked today. All right, ready? So, um, uh, da, da, da. I'm gonna go go through this. Um, th these, I got off the phone with her. So, okay, these didn't send until after she already saw it, um, but she said. And also before, you, before we even say this too, here's the, here's the other side of that, right? Say the client goes with a thousand dollar person and then they go, then they have to go to their boss if they're a corporate person, or they have to go to their son who just graduated college and say, listen, it was a toss up. We, uh, I, I just, we got this one guy. We had this other guy who's, and then they go back and look at your stuff versus the other guy's stuff. And they go, Jesus, why the hell are we, why yeah. the hell are we hire this guy? Like, yeah, and, and comp now they know they're they, compromising. Now, yeah, they're compromising. Dude, right. so good. Because that's the you're thing the, is, You're in a position of leverage at that Yeah, point. When, when you charge $10,000, somebody charges $1,000, and they go with the $1,000 guy, it's not because they thought he was better or more worth it. It's because literally they were like, well, we got to compromise. Yeah. Um, that's a whole, we got podcasts about that already filmed. So don't worry, yeah. go through the, um, okay. What you need to know is I got off the phone with her. Um, all I said, cause with the virtual shows, like I said, I'm not really going after them as aggressively. I said, Hey, I know you're already talking with another magician. Um, I, you know, I've got some videos about virtual shows. I've also got some really awesome stuff on, on Instagram, but as opposed to me telling you what I do, why don't you just pull up my Instagram or my YouTube and check out the videos I have on there and shoot me a text once you've seen them. Next message I get, just look at your webpage and video links. This is, Client name. Are you available the sixth or seventh of uh, the sixth or seventh, which is Wednesday, May sixth? And then she said, "Could you do it for this price?" Boom. And I literally replied. It was lower than what I wanted to do. I said, "Hey, unfortunately, I'm well. I'm available sixth or seventh, but I can't do it for the price you said. I'm so sorry. I wish I could help." And then she said, "No problem. Let's just do the sixth. Like that credibility. <laughs> now, if you had not had any of that content, oh no, would have never hired the other person. Yeah, she'd be like, "Ah, it's a toss up. Now they're both the same." Right. Yeah. So now you're setting yourself apart. Now, here's the thing. If you're a magician, you don't have to go out and do exactly what Chris does. You need to do whatever works for you. Right. Like what Chris does for him works for him. And it may be similar, but you need to do what taking, works for you. I'm taking right? some serious risk on social media, too. I post things I should not be posting. It's weird because I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't think you post things that you should be posting. Yeah. I actually want to talk about this on this podcast real quick, because one thing that I've noticed with the 10,000 followers that I have now I'm able to really be myself more than when I didn't have that. I don't know why that happened. There's not a pressure to, to Yeah, I feel like impress. there's, I feel like now that I have 10,000 people, when people watch my stuff, like if I have 1,000 people I'm doing stuff, they'd be like, ugh, that's probably why he only has 1,000 followers. Yeah. If I have 10,000, they do the same thing. They say the same thing. Oh, that's probably why he has 10,000 followers. Yeah. But it's a different thing. So like- Yeah, you look at Kevin Hart and he's you know, like, Kevin Hart can do whatever he wants. Yeah, I just, I just got to do more of myself. I let a kid get on my, I shouldn't say this on no, this, you but shouldn't. I'm going to say it anyway. I let some kid get on my Instagram and light his, Shh. light his nipples on, <laughs> light his nipples on fire on my thing to celebrate getting to 10K. Nobody oh, had a problem man. with it. It was funny. In fact, that kid's famous now. And that's true. He's, he's famous now. And guess what? I would have never known to do that at a thousand followers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, yeah. like you can see, like I, I thought it was funny and I was like, ah, I think it's funny. Other people will enjoy it. So many other people enjoyed it. He's rocking the Instagram game. So yeah. good for him. <laughs> yeah, he got, man, that's so funny. Um, <laughs> I lost completely what I was going to say. I just, Shane right. didn't want me to share that, but it's true. It's I really like, I, I'm trying to do more, more different things, be myself. Um, you said that you want to talk about um, uh, being, when 10,000 followers, Kevin Hart, you can do, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, I, I, mean, I said, I said, I'm posting things I shouldn't be posting. You said, I don't think so. Yeah, because I mean, you're just being authentic to you. You're posting things that you enjoy. I'm already weird as it is, man. I already like stupid yeah, stuff. Yeah, I think there's more stuff along those lines that you could post. Yeah, and which yeah. is good is- Because here's the thing, people, 
you're going to lose followers, right? You're going to yeah. gain followers and you're going to lose followers. The followers that you lose don't, you should not just care about them. They, they weren't your followers anyway, right? Like they're not the people that's going to become, that are going to become fans of yours, right? So what is the point you need to, you're going to constantly weed down, even though the follower count grows, it'll, it'll grow and then it'll drop and it'll grow and it'll drop and it'll grow and it'll drop and it'll grow and it'll drop. It'll eventually get to the point where those people that follow you are true followers, right? They're true yeah. fans of yours. So, and so it's, it doesn't matter. And also listen to your audience. Yeah. Listen to your audience means actually listen to your audience and what they say in the comments and what they DM you and that sort of thing. It also means uh, when I say listen to your audience, I mean, look at the analytics on your social media. So look at the analytics like, OK, um, this video didn't get as many views as this video. Is that because of the time that it got posted? Is that because of the content it was? The description. Is that because of the description? Hashtag that hashtags. I hashtags. Yeah, there's a lot of different things now that you need to go in and look at and figure out. It's the it's a great reason to have a business Instagram account as opposed to just and private. And cultivating fans is so important. I'm not talking about followers, fans. Fans are different followers. I know who my followers are. I know who my fans are. My fans get messages from me that say, hey guys, just made a new post. Thanks so much for getting me to 10K. Do your thing. I can just say, do your thing. And they already know to go like, comment, and share. And they do it. And it boosts my engagement up. Yeah. Every time I post something, I just send it to them. Hey, I really appreciate you doing this for me every single time. What can I do for you? If you just like and comment, I'd love to get on a video call and say thank you, whatever. Yeah. I just send it out. Only two or three of them are going to ask me for that video call. You know what I mean? Right. Just things where, you're, where your fans are promoting the content for you, it will grow so much faster. So not only is it posting consistent content, it's interacting with your fan base, sending them thank yous, DMs, you know, video calls, whatever you can do to make them feel like you've paid attention to them. Worst thing you do is get a fan and never acknowledge them. Yeah, you know they'll I mean? leave yeah. quickly. I don't know, though, that I agree that listen to your fans all the time because constantly all they ever want me to do is magic, 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 magic. Like, do Well, magic. I mean, like, listen to your fans in the sense that... Um, if you don't like, like a video, if you put yeah, it... Like, yeah, like, if you get a lot of people that are like, dude, what, what was that video about? Yeah. You know, you get a lot of negative feedback. You're going to get negative feedback anyways. And when you start posting more content and the more followers you get, you get the more negative feedback you get. But and, um, but if you get it from thousands of people, they're like, yeah, what was that about? Um, it's probably a good sign you maybe should not. I'm going to speak again. this with some power and some truth. And I want you to know that 99% of you are not, this isn't going to click with you and you're yeah. going to ignore it. But let me say this for the 1% of you that it will. Don't worry what people think about your plan and what your content is. Like when I told people I was going to blow up on Instagram, Shane was one of them. They, yeah. they didn't want, they were like, all right, man, I think it's a waste of time. And I just had this vision. I knew what I wanted to do. I stayed true to it and it worked. So like everybody I told about this said it wasn't going to work, but I knew for me it was the right thing. So find what that is for you. You can ask people what they'll think about it, but my honest advice is don't worry about asking them until it's already done. Like put the content out and then say, what do you think about that? Because right. if, if you, Shane tells me this all the time, if you get 10 people to say something, you're gonna get 10 different opinions. Yeah. And that's gonna stop you from putting out content. So many people ask me for advice on videos before they put it out, I won't even do it. I'll say, hey, go ahead and put the video out and then I'll tell you what I think of it. Yeah. The reason I tell them that is so that they can get a, a wide population of people to show their engagement. Right, so here's the thing, and, and since you brought that up about me not agreeing with it, I still don't agree with it. Here's what I do agree with though. <laughs> um, like, I don't like the stuff that you, it's not that I don't like it, it's just that. It's not your style. It's, it's not my style, the kind of stuff you put out, but, but, and this is a big, a big old but, uh, Bertha but, is uh, the leverage that you can now create off the, yeah. off the following is huge. That I do agree with. Um, so it's, no, it's a, Catch twenty two, right? So it's yeah. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't work, well, when for I get you, to thirty thousand followers, know. I can shift to do things that maybe are more, maybe you'll agree with more, right? I don't like, know. It doesn't matter what I agree with. It, you know, it's your content. Um, it's like, and I'm going to say this because I think it might be good for people to hear this. It's like when we, you know, when we started the Beyond the Magic um, series on YouTube, you know, we switched gears four episodes in. And, you know, I made the comment to you like, okay, this is not my style of what I would do, um, but it's not my brand. Yeah. <laughs> it's your brand. And so I, you got to do yeah. what's good for your brand. Now, it's good to take advice from people, right? And, you know, once again, 50,000 foot, you know, 50,000 foot view, um, but it's granular. It's 50,000 foot view for yeah. me, but at the end of the day, it's granular for you, you know, to figure out. Hopefully that makes sense. Well, one thing I'll say is there was other Instagrammers that were trying to blow up alongside me. They saw what I was doing and kind of copying what I was doing. 
Um, but what's funny is they fit the mold of the people they were around. Like, you know, there's a lot of like rappers and stuff that I was doing. I think this is my view. Hip hop culture really shapes mainstream media. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So, you know, I'm doing stuff with hip hop artists and, you know, you know, th things like that. And so, you know, but I always would get on there, my pale self and talk like I am talking now. And, but then the other people were getting on, they'd show up. It was so cringy, you know, it's too I don't even want you, the twins, whatever. They're yeah. like, they're like, what's popping slime? What's good with you? Like, I'm like, oh, it's so, like so cringy. But I get on there, I sit down, I'm like, hey man, you know, I'm really here to spread God's grace through magic, and I really hope that you know, in some ways, anybody who's looking for a light in the world will know that you know God's here for them. And then I just did magic, and they responded to it because I didn't, I didn't blow smoke at them. I didn't try to be something I wasn't. And you were genuine. I was so genuine, and I was just who I was. I, I don't know. I, I mean. Don't don't feel like you have to copy the other social media algorithm or not the algorithm the formulas right right so there's a friend of ours um, named Jawal that produces like these really crazy like cinematic like small like short super videos good, super good is also a magician um, if you're watching Jawal you know, my suggestion for something like that you're right stay in your lane right is like I think there's a whole genre, and this is something I personally thought about. I'm just not going to do it, so I'm going to give it away. Um, is creating a genre of magic short films, right? Which I think yeah. someone like Jawal or so Tommy, um, who's got kind of the same kind of similar um, aesthetic, right? Go check out their Instagram. So J O A O so does man. things, just like it sounds. J O A O. That's how you say Jawal. It's yeah. uh, Portuguese. J O A O does things, and the other one, Tommy T O M M Y, got magic. Tommy yeah. got magic. J O A O does things. Yeah, they're both photographers so and videographers. Um, and uh, so, so good, man. They're but, the ones who deserve to blow up. I, I have no business blowing up on Instagram. They really should be. Well, no, but it, I think, you know, you, you talk about, you know, being genuine, like staying genuine to your brand and who you are as a person uh, and what you're interested like, in. Like I can watch I mean, Jawal's videos and I know what type of tattoos he has. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, so... Yeah, I mean, just stay true to your brand. Stay true to who you are. Don't overthink it. Um, you know, figure out what you can put on each platform. If you're not sure about what to put out on each stuff, reach out to Chris or me. You know, we'll yeah, try we'll to give you some kind of we advice will. on what you should put out. Um, and uh, but understand, uh, at the end of the day, it's a lot of work. It's a lot. Of work. Um, it's probably more work than you're honestly willing to put in. But I guarantee, if you put it in, you will see results. You just got to put it in. You, know, you grind for a time, right? You guys have seen my Beyond the Magic, and you've seen me and Shane wake up early, do six shows, go back to bed, do it the next day, travel, yeah, not sleep, not eat, two days, three yeah. cities, two days. Like that, and I'm not trying to scare you away, but that does not compare to what I'm doing to blow up on social media. However, I mean, no travel. No travel. Oh yeah, no travel. But it's I mean, still more work. I mean, I'm 18 hours a day. I wake up to sleep. Like I don't. I, there was. A, I fasted for three days on accident. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not a joke. That's true. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it takes work. You know. Uh, if you want somebody to help you with that, you know, reach out to us. You we'll know, do we, it. Yeah, we try to help you as much as we can. Um. But that is it. Any other thing? No. To say? No. I hope people listening take this stuff seriously because. It's the same stuff that's everywhere. It's the same things Gary Vee says. It's the same thing everybody says. And just as soon as you follow it, as soon as you commit to putting out content, you will see the results. Yeah. So yeah. hope that's you guys right. took something away from this. Let us know what you what else you want us to talk about in the comments below. Hey, and also speaking of social media, drop a like on this, you know, leave a comment. Go follow me on Instagram, Chris Mike Does Magic. Or, or Chris <laughs> Mike does, Chris Mike Magic. <laughs> I was thinking of plugging into wall. Uh, Chris Mike, <laughs> Chris Mike Magic. So leave a follow there, um, and then you can see sort of my inner workings of what I'm doing to, to blow it up. Yeah. Also, I'm going to throw this out here. We threw it out on a live um, on, I guess, Instagram about the YouTube show. Where we're right. We? Yeah. Um, that was a story. Yeah, the story on your Instagram. So uh, we're thinking about coming up with a weekly YouTube style show of like Rhett and Link or Dope or Not style or. Um, you know, just two people doing stupid things and review or whatever it is, right? Doesn't have to be reviews, but just some kind of fun show. If you have an idea of like, yo, like this would be a funny show, you guys should do this. Um, let us know. Yeah, uh, we're gonna be thinking about it ourselves, but we all already think about so much content. I pitched an idea to Shane. It was called Magic Fingers. He didn't like it. <laughs> just kidding. All right. On that note. All right. See you guys. See ya.